sail from New York last night. So far, it's been a good sail. We've we've averaged five knots, which is great. Um, we just sailed past Atlantic City, which was originally going to be my my goal to make it there, but uh, the weather's still good, so I decided to keep on going further south. Um, I might regret that. There is supposed to be some southerlies, pretty strong, maybe up to a gale strength. But I think I'll just probably heave too if that happens. I was just laying here in bed and a bird flew in and landed on my window. <laughs> and then it flew right back out the companion way. The bird just came in again and now it's landed on my head. All right, the sun's going down or has gone down and our wind is, well, I guess it came back, but we're starting to lose the wind for a little bit there. It seems to be coming and going. I'm gonna make some salmon and try not to cook my bird friend. Salmon. I have to just do it on the floor because we're healing pretty good. That's right, the wind's like south by southwest, but if it goes all the way south, I think we can make it to uh, Cape May or even the other side of the Delaware Canal, I forget what that is called. Um, it's amazing how how poorly we point to windward, like once we've got a little bit of a uh, wave action. I think I might play around with uh, taking the, uh, the anchor off the front, the big heavy one. Um, definitely I think when I sail across the Atlantic I'll take that off. Uh, I think it would reduce the kind of the pitching motion and maybe able keep the boat, you know, able to, to sail a little better to windward. Here you can see our track. It looks like we'll make it a little south of Atlantic City. down the sailing conditions are quite good I've just been reading my book um, I've, I've gotten a chance to use this AIS a little bit and I, I really like it I probably should have gotten one sooner my only kind of quarrels with this one are the alarm where I think it'll work great when you're just like way out at sea um, and you just you know want to see if there's a boat that comes anywhere near you uh, the problem is when there's a lot of boats around the, and they're coming within uh, a couple miles of you because the when you when you're sailing it with the wind vane or even the autopilot it will tend to kind of you know kind of do a little s bend kind of curves as the waves kind of knock it on and off course um, and that's okay but I think this thing it doesn't because it's like your your heading is constantly kind of changing um, there's always like you're kind of sweeping back and forth and this thing like uses its kind of like uh, like a vector to kind of predict where you're gonna have a collision with another boat. So there's a, like a huge range where you're like you swing back, and then it's like oh you're about to, you're you're gonna be in a collision. And what it needs to do is it needs to kind of average out the swings um, because it thinks you're gonna it sets off too many false false alarms basically. I mean because the alarm will go off and then it'll cancel itself and then it'll go off and then it'll cancel itself. Um, and uh, just kind of annoying. I just made it into the inlet and I'm going under this bridge, which I can barely see. <laughs> I can just barely, I can make out the lights, barely a little bit of a silhouette. There's no moonlight or starlight anymore. It's super dark. At least it's calm inside here. It was a little bit uh, rough, a little bit windy and wavy outside. pulling us through here, I think. Oh man, let's hope we're... That looks close. I was able to get in an anchor without any trouble. Um, it's pretty calm in here. I'm anchored in about eight feet of water. And we're in, we're in Ocean City, which is just a few miles south, south of Atlantic City. 
looks like I'll just, I'll just wait out here in the southerlies tomorrow and then it should switch north again the next day and then keep on moving. It's uh, 4.45 a.m. so I'm gonna try to go to sleep before the sun comes up. I just uh, weighed anchor and sailed out of the channel in uh, New Jersey and there were some impressive breakers on the way out. The rain has subsided a little bit which is nice. It was raining when I pulled the anchor. I waited around till 11 and then I was just like oh, I'm never gonna get out of here if I don't just go so I had to sail out in the rain. I don't really like sailing in the rain. I just do it if I need to. Looks like we got a real good forecast. It could get pretty gusty, but so far it's not too good, too bad. I think I'm, if I just stay close enough to the coast, I won't get into the bad stuff. I'm just making a can of chili now. Uh, we're going pretty quick. We're doing uh, five and a half knots, which is pretty good for the, uh, just a reef main and a little bit of jib. I didn't want to put out too much sail, so I didn't get surprised um, when, it, when the, the gust comes. We've done about 40 miles so far, and um, the, the wind kind of lightened up surprisingly, um, and the swell kind of picked up. So man, we are really rocking. The uh, jib isn't able to stay open anymore because the rocking is so bad. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the uh, put the pole out there, but I'm not looking forward to doing that in the rain. So I got my boots and stuff on. And I'm gonna clip in for sure because I don't want to fall overboard. Would not be good today. Okay. Rain has kind of stopped to a sprinkle, so this is a good opportunity to do it. Got the, the jib curled up for a second. And I've got the main on a preventer here. All right, let's just get this done. All right, I got, I got the pole up. You can see it there. That got us an extra knot of boat speed. Um, it made the rocking a lot worse, unfortunately, but at least we're going faster and the sail's not flogging around. Oh man, that was so frustrating. Okay, so popping out of my chiller back there. Um, my, my solution is just to put a jug of water to hold the tiller down for now. The last time it popped out, I went out there and I mean, uh, I didn't put my raincoat on because it wasn't raining and uh, the pin won't go back in like it won't fit in the hole anymore i don't know what happened like maybe something broke off in there or i just i was trying forever and then a wave just washed over the entire cockpit and i'm just like oh i'm completely drenched now it even came into the inside of the boat everything's wet it's 4 a.m i was just kind of napping and the boat went way off course Got hit by a wave and now there's there's salt water all over the floor. I'm not sure where it got in from. Everything's all soaked down there. All the bedding and everything fell off. Half the stuff fell off my I, galley. I need to really get stuff more secure before I try to cross an ocean. Look, looks like the wind shift. I'm gonna have to do a jive. I really wish I didn't have the the pull out right now. Um, Cause now I gotta go on the foredeck to put that away. I kind of want to drop the main. Can't do both at the same time. All right, I drive the main. Um, I just put the jib away. I left the pole out. I'm just going to leave it like that until tomorrow morning. We're still doing six knots. Feels pretty good. Um, it's feeling really crazy out here. And we switched tacks. It's much better on this side. The sun should be coming up in, uh, in about two hours, and then maybe I'll put the jib back out. Well, the jive is done. Um, it feels good. Now we're on the right course. We're headed straight towards the, uh, the inlet in North Carolina that I'm going to aim for, uh, Oregon Inlet. 
it looks like it could be maybe a little bit difficult, but uh, I think I'll time it so we'll get in Sunday uh, during the day and it looks like it'll be uh, calmed down by then. And I looked at the hydrographic uh, surveys uh, for the last month, so I got the latest depth information. So I think we'll be in good shape to, to sail in through there. And then into the Pamlico and across to Oriental. Um, I'm really curious how all this water got in the boat just then because had all the hatches closed. I mean, I guess I could have sprayed through the door if we really got slammed with it a wave. Um, just thought I, I thought I had solved all this stuff. Um, you know, back to back to work once I get back in North Carolina. It looks like. All right, it's morning time. We covered a lot of ground last night. We continued to average six knots. Waves have gotten kind of big out here. I use my sheets and a t-shirt to soak up the water on the floor. We covered 130 miles in the last 22 hours, which is great. Uh, there's 100 more miles to go. And I might just slow down a little bit if I'm gonna make the inlet Sunday morning uh, in daylight. Um, if I'd have to do that, I'll just heave too, no big deal. So I'm gonna make some breakfast now. some Italian sausage in the fridge that uh, I was gonna grill up with some potatoes and that sounded so good uh, but in this sea state I think it's just gonna end in disaster it's just gonna go flying across the uh, the cabin so it's it's vegetable lentil soup today looks like winds are gonna continue to grow over Friday night and then Saturday they'll start to finally lighten up That'll be good for coming into the inlet tomorrow. I wasn't expecting to see that out at sea. Just two random windmills. <laughs> My bird friend came to join me on another passage. It's the next morning. So last night the wind lightened up and the waves dropped down to about four feet, actually, which was looking good. Um, the day I thought they would get smaller, but they've actually, they've gotten back up to about eight feet. And I think that's just gonna be too, too big to go through uh, the Oregon Inlet. Uh, I just think it's gonna be break, big breakers there if the waves are eight feet. I'm gonna go get a little closer and see if I can look with binoculars, um, but I might have to go around Cape Hatteras. Okay, I can start to see water tower. I think it's going to be really rough trying to go in the inlet. It would be nice to sail through the sound, but so I just confirmed that with uh, called Boat US. I got close enough to get a signal and they said that's what I was thinking. We have a seven foot swell out here. The, the bar is like six feet, so 
the waves would be stacking up and breaking over that and I did not. I don't really want to be surfing this thing down, breaking waves uh, today. So it looks like I'm going to sail around uh, Diamond Shoals, add maybe an extra 75 miles to my trip. Um, maybe tomorrow we'll get in. I don't know, there's, there's also Ocracoke, um, the inlet over there, but I probably have to go around to Beaufort or Beaufort, I forget what, what, how it's pronounced. We're sailing past Cape Hatteras now. Um, my friend was thinking it might be a little bit rough here because I'd be opposing the Gulf Stream, but, uh, and the, the wind is with me for the Gulf Stream is against me, but I haven't really noticed it. I think I'm inside of the Gulf Stream, so it's not too much of a factor today. Wind is just definitely lightened up a little bit. It's down to maybe 10 to 12 knots. And the waves are still enough to kind of make the boat a little bit uncomfortable. I wish there was a little bit more wind for this size waves, but uh, we're still moving along, so I'm not, I'm not complaining too much. You can kind of sense we're getting close to um, this uh, kind of cape out here because the waves are kind of coming in two directions and every once in a while it gets the boat on a real awkward kind of oscillation cycle. So I want to say this is the fourth day I've been sailing on this passage. Yeah, day number four. Um, we just cleared the Cape Lookout Shoal, so heading up for the Beaufort uh, Inlet. I forget what it, which one it's called. Uh, now I have to start kind of, I think it'll be a broad reach or a close reach. I don't know. I'm putting my boots on and jacket just because I think I'm going to start getting wet now. The wind has picked up again. It's been fun. I've been able to read a few books. My, these shorter passages I'm not usually feel like reading, but uh, this one's been a good one. Kind of ready to spend some time on land. Uh, I need to find out where I'm going to haul the boat out and get my surgery and stuff. So lots of logistical stuff to work out. So yeah, I think we'll get in the inlet today and maybe anchor, maybe check out those those wild uh, horses in the Shackle, Shackleton, something like that area. Ah, forgot to have this thing all the way closed. Just a little bit of crack and all this water came in. Oh well. With all the rain and clouds, the uh, the batteries haven't been able to, the solar panels haven't been able to top the batteries all the way off. I'm not running the motor now. But I just I turned off the fridge just because I don't really have anything I need to keep cold now. I like to keep the batteries charged up enough in case I need to start the motor a few times. Um, and yeah, I'm using my house bank as my starting bank. Um, about four miles from the inlet and we're doing good now we're doing about five knots but there's supposed to be a current it looks like it could be pretty strong um, that our time we're gonna go through will be going against us at about two knots so that could definitely hinder us being able to get in we'll see when we get up closer the water's flattened out a bunch I think it's the uh, lookout okay. kind of blocking Water coming in. A lot of water coming in under the, uh, I think it was talking about deck cleats or tow rail or something over there. But uh, yeah, it's flattened out a little bit, so we're not getting as many waves uh, washing over the boat. We're in the hamster wheel. It's barely moving. I just uh, dropped my anchor right outside of town, and there's also this island, and look. I think I got here the wrong day. Seems like everything's closed. Ooh, there's some money around here. We got the nice town dinghy docks. Always appreciate when places have a nice 
This is a really nice dinghy dock, actually. And it's even got a little kind of mini pier. And there's Pickle all the way up over there. We are still floating. We need to patch that in the front half. It's getting a little bit leaky. I found my victory beer and burger. Um, there was a couple of restaurants that were open. I guess most of them were closed on Monday. I guess we got a slack tide now. It's amazing how calm it is. It was so, the current and wind was so strong when I rode over originally. Couldn't even think of trying to film. But I think I'm gonna go check out this little island of wild horses over here. I mean, that's pretty cool. Don't see that every day. And um, yeah, just get a little exercise, stretch my legs. And I'll have to look up the currents tomorrow and figure out when I'm gonna sail over to, um, well, probably mostly motor, over to Oriental. But it looks like there might be some wind. Maybe I can motor sail. I need to get rowing. Little beach here. Oh, fish jumped. That kind of just turned into a big bushwhacking session. You know, I'm covered in like little sand burrs and stuff now. I'll try again tomorrow. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I really had a good time on that passage. I, I felt like I was finally getting a taste of what it's gonna be like to cross the Atlantic, you know, getting out into some bigger swell. And man, like breaking that, that three inch whisker pole, that was pretty uh, pre impressive piece of hardware to, to break. So this video will wrap up the sailing, um, offshore sailing content for a little bit while I change gears and move into project videos. But I think we're gonna have some really good content, both about the boat and uh, the workshop that I'm setting up for myself. If you got something out of this video and wanna make a contribution, there's links in the description. Thanks a lot for everybody who supported. I really love reading all your messages. Um, before I go, I'm gonna leave you guys with one more little bit of sailing footage. And I'll see you guys next time.